Well, welcome. This is the St. Ambrose University Assistive Technology Lab, and today I'm, I'm going to show you all the steps necessary to adapt one of these second generation Fisher Price Wild Things. This is a wonderful toy which can handle up to 100 pounds of weight and is fairly easily hacked. Um, I took the original control board, which was a, a nice board, but it just looked like it was going to be a little bit more difficult than I was expecting to, uh, to control this. And I, want, I wanted to control all aspects of things, not just the switches, but the speed control and everything else uh, uh, with a little bit more precision than this would allow. So what I did, I put an Arduino computer on board here, a little microcomputer, and I'm using these Spark controllers by REV. Um, these are really easy to interface to. The computer just thinks it's a servo. You, uh, you write different pulse width lengths to it, and it's, it's a very, very simple. I'm also using LockLine. LockLine is a wonderful piece of uh, equipment that every shop should have. Uh, this allows me to easily snap the joystick out here and snap it on the other side. So if I want to use it with somebody else, with, with, they can only use the right hand. Well. It makes it so simple instead of actually having to redesign something. So I can kind of just change it on the fly there too. The joystick replaces the two sticks that were here. They were two proportional controlled uh, front and back sticks on either side. Uh, the client I have though, of course, cannot use both hands. And so they wanted to give her some training for a wheelchair before they got the wheelchair. And so this really has the same logic of a, a wheelchair. It's, it's still proportional control, but it's effect you really don't see that much at low speed. This is user selectable on speed. You just have, you just have to move a little pin around on top of your Arduino, but uh, it still gives me all access, eight access control. Um, so it really makes a wonderful quick, quick, quick uh, functionality for someone using a small micro joystick. So. So anyway, that's where we're going to start, and I'll show you the steps necessary to do that. I have my contact information here too at St. Ambrose, but uh, do not hesitate to contact me if you have questions about the software, the code, or how I designed this piece of equipment. So, more to come. As a general rule, before you adapt anything, make sure it works, okay? Uh, you're modifying so much of some things that sometimes when they don't work the way you expect it to work, is it something you've done, a mistake you might have made, or did you buy a lemon to begin with? So I've already taken this, charged the battery up, uh, plugged it in, and yes, everything works in this particular model. So the original design comes with these little joysticks. Now these are great, they're just up front and back. Uh, they're also proportional control, and really what they are, they're Hall effect switches, which are magnetically coupled, so there's no switches to wear out. So it's really a wonderful design. I'm kind of happy how well this new version is versus the old one here too. But um, step one, be sure it works. Now we have to remove the joysticks. We're going to mount our own lock line holders here too. Unfortunately, there is no easy way to get these things out of here. These joysticks are really many layers deep, and so the tubing is just bolts and screws in the tubings here, there's screws in the plastic housing, there's screws underneath. So you have to kind of just look all around and find all the screws necessary to take off. Both this plastic, the inside plastic, including the tubing here too, then we can get down to what we need. Okay, once you remove the screws from the inside here, both sides here, basically get the things taken out of the, the tubing up here so you can pull it apart. Um, but then the next step is really flipping the thing over and removing the screws at the top and inside here so this whole attachment can be lifted off. Now I found once you get all the screws taken off underneath and both ends of the metal tubing, if you pop this one, the front piece off, that allows you to open up the whole thing. You can slide the tubing through there and pull that cowling off. Once that's done, you can just lift up the joystick. It's still retained by the little um, clip down here, but that can simply be um, removed because you're not going to use these joysticks. I'm going to keep them around in case I ever want to take one back to stock again, but uh, um, they're really nice things here. Now I did the same to the, to the other side here. I took off the four bolts down there. Pull the bottom one first, then you can easily unsnap it, lift it out, and there's your other joystick out. Okay, once you remove all the 
screws that hold the wire down and the three bolts that hold the cover on the board that can easily be slipped out. Here's your control board with all the wiring so you want here too but to give you a little more access let's get this last tie down removed here. This goes the power plug going to the, the battery so and again you can just remove these plugs but pay attention to what's right and what's left. These two control the motors on the right side to me and, and the other two motors here control this other side um, of the cart here. What I did here, I needed a, I'm not using these switches, these are nice switches, but I'm just using these things more as platforms to put my lock line. So I took some, a 2x4, planed it down, used my bandsaw and cut it out and what I did, I made these little aluminum plates, um, drill a hole so it would be and threaded them, so this half inch MPT threading, uh, thread cut basically. And then I mounted that right on top of the board here. Drilled a hole through there so I can just screw the whole thing in there. And what that's going to allow me to do is going to give me a nice starter piece that I can put my lock line to put the uh, joystick on. I wish I could find a half inch to three quarter female. I just had to make my own out of, make my own out of these three pieces. So. I would like to have used the original space, the one on the bottom down here, that just couldn't quite work. So what I did, I ended up making this little board here that fits right down in here. I'll show you down here. That fits right down here in the same area. Okay, so I'm using the same three bolt holes that actually held the original wires down. So it's going to fit right down the same area right here. And I drilled holes for the wires coming from the motors here too. And I also, all these ends had an original slide. Okay, this one right here that just clip on. But I could not use that. So what I did, I took these round ones and basically crimped them on and then soldered them on too. So now all my connections are really quite positive then too. So, so anyway, I'm going to mount this on here now, rewire it back up a little bit and get the Arduino on board and, and uh, I'll come back then. Well this is the board mounted in there. I went ahead and put a power board, power strip here. This car is only to be used with supervision. So we do have some 12 volt exposed in here. Um, so be aware of that, but uh, because it's only, only going to be used under supervision, well, that's just the way it's going to be. There's going to be exposed wires here anyway. So I went ahead and actually mounted both of my Spark motor controllers here. The wires to the motors, of course, ones, use the ones coming from the bottom right here. And I'll be back in a few minutes and I'll have the Arduino mounted and the off-on switch. Just for a little extra safety. I'm mounting a little extra switch right here. All this does is basically supply power to the computer. And so what I did, I just basically, it's a little off-on switch, ran through the same wire that the seat switch is in originally here, and I'll, I'll tighten that up, and basically so when this power is off to the, to the Arduino, it will not be allowing any pulses to go to the motor controller, and everything will be essentially turned off. Of course, if this is just turned off and the battery is still plugged in, it will eventually drain the battery. So when you stop using this, make sure you unplug the battery as well. One of the problems I found was basically not all joysticks are created equal. And you might have different readings at rest on both axes. So up here you can see, this is how I'm mapping them, new value. And I kind of had to fool around with the numbers here a little bit, uh, 167 to 101, and that gives me a strictly 85, 85 on both the X and Y axis. So you might have to kind of fool around with your software a little bit to get it working out right. I found though, once you get these numbers pretty much established, they stay pretty well rock solid. Well, this is my finished board in place here. Basically, I have both of the Spark motor controllers in coast mode. Look at the documentation on that, because coast mode means when the power goes off, they just coast down instead of actually breaking. Um, so what I have, I have my joystick here. So forward, both are engaged. 
and then back to reverse. Both are in reverse mode. It actually has all eight directions. So if I start forward, I can rotate it around. There's spin to the right, back, full reverse, back with spin, left spin, left forward, and of course back to full. As simple as that. On the Arduino shield I built here, these have little jumpers I have here, and basically if there's no jumper, it's going to default to a slow mode. But this is really the slowest mode, this is the next faster, a little bit faster, and a little bit faster. So just by moving that jumper to these pins, you can go ahead and change the speed or the maximum speed for this cart here. Whatever side you're assembling the joystick on, basically run it up in between there. Just a little groove cut in the wood, give it some space. But, and I got enough that I can put it on either side no matter how I want to configure it. I also put a little lock line in the back here, or this little zip tie to keep it from being pulled out and pulling connections out on the board. So, seems like only common sense. Well, that's the finished cart. I'm using lock line because this way, if necessary, I have enough I can re rewire it and reroute it to this side or this side. This thing also makes it really adjustable. I can add more pieces and take them away for height. What I'm going to have to do on this one though, this little kiddo is pretty small, so I got this from another um, system, so actually I can give her a little bit more support than two. So that's really the finished device. So basically, it works really slick. I can turn it on here and forward. Oh, battery needs to be plugged in. So, forward, back, left turn, left turn, right turn, nice and control. How are you getting, Mom? Nice job, Haven. Give me a high five.